What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield of VGC 2022 video. Today we're gonna to be talking about the top 32 teams at the Salt Lake City Regional, which happened this uh, previous weekend. And while I was pretty busy and I you know, didn't pay too much attention to it while it was going on, I did pop my head in here and there into the stream to see what was you know, happening on stream. And there were a lot of great matches. There were a lot of interesting teams in top 32. Um, and I will stop the comment of, oh, hey, look, there's a ton of Zashi in this format sucks. I'll get into that in a second and why that doesn't inherently make the format suck why it actually probably allows for a little bit more creativity than you would imagine in the ways of beating Zacian. Um, I'm gonna get into that in a second, but before we do, if you guys enjoy this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications because I bring you daily VGC content, and answer my comment question of the day. What are you gonna be building around for your next event, whether it be a regional or whether it be like some kind of online tournament? Let me know in the comment section down below and let's go ahead and get into it. So starting off, Let's talk about the heavy Zacian representation. Yes, Zacian, I counted them, was on 23 out of 32 teams. You know, that's you know, well over 66%. It's well over like a third of the teams, I believe, unless my math's wrong, I'm stupid. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's about like two thirds of the teams. So why is that? Obviously, Zacian is the best Pokemon in the format. We've known that for a while. Even on Peakalytics, it's at about 61% usage. It has a natural plus one on switch and it deals double damage to Dynamax and Steel is just such a great offensive typing in this format. It hits so many things. It's even capable of two-shotting Thunderous when Dynamaxed, a Pokemon that resists Steel moves because Thunderous, while you know being a very powerful Pokemon, doesn't have the great physical defense stat, then it needs to take that hit. So you need to intimidate Zacian and you need ways to intimidate Zacian. And you can see that this tournament, um, more so than using Zacian, was built, like a lot of the teams either use Zacian or they prepared to beat Zacian, which might sound intuitive to a lot of you, but I know uh, there are a lot of people who are just now tuning into the channel after the recent success of uh, the VGC lore videos. So I wanna get more in depth in that sort of thing and explain a few things that maybe um, some newer VGC players or people who are interested in getting into the format uh, might not know that we all would otherwise know. So yeah, uh, Zacian, all of top four was Zacian, uh, but what we can see is that within top eight and top 16, it was less so that Zacian was important to have on your team to win, and more that it was a powerful steel type was needed on your team. Almost all these teams have a strong steel type, whether it be a defensive one or a super offensive one. So top four, all Zacian. In top eight, we see Solgaleo, Zacian, Necrozma Dust Main, and another Solgaleo. And then in top 16, we can see Solgaleo, one of the only teams, or a few of the only teams that don't have steel types, you know, bunched in right here in like the lower end of um, top 16. So you can still succeed without a steel type, but you can see that it gets a little bit, you know, more difficult. You know, Alberto didn't have a steel type and um, uh, Vizishita didn't have a steel type. Sorry if I like butchered the pr pronunciation there. Uh, but then, you know, we have two more Zashins here and even a Kartana. So steel is very important in this format. With steel being very important, obviously you want ways to beat steel. What's a great way to beat steel? Well, Charizard and Landorus also saw a really decent amount of usage in the format, and one of the Pokemon that wall steel types super well, Gastrodon, also saw heavy representation. So I, my, my like theory at the moment is, it's less that Zacian is good, and more powerful, oppressive, weakness policy abusing steel types and Zacian are good, if that makes sense. Because we can see Solgaleo in the Crossroad Dust Main, so Galio almost always runs a weakness policy. Sometimes it's Life Orb, sometimes it's Assault Vest, but it's, you know, usually, usually, usually weakness policy. And, and why is that? Well, so Galio has the ability Full Metal Body, uh, which makes it so, if I could get to the right screen here, you can't um, actually intimidate Solgaleo. You can't lower its stats with Snarl, Bulldoze, or anything. Um, and when you get a weakness policy boost, look at that. It's like you're at a permanent plus two attack unless something weird happens, like you run into me on the ladder and I topsy-turvy it with a grab locked. Um, but also the only way to lower that attack set at that point uh, would be to burn it with Mimikyu, which is a very common Pokemon seen on Trick Room teams. It's one of the most reliable Trick Room setters. Or you could even put it to sleep with an Amoongus if you're running like a Sash Amoongus and you can take like a Photon Geyser or um, or a uh, Psychic Fangs in, the, in terms of Solgaleo, not so much Necrozma Dust Main here. Uh, so yeah, those are ways to stop Solgaleo. You can see Zach here really centered his team around Solgaleo. Um, we don't have the pace, but I can assume that, you know, there was a way to activate the Solgaleo's weakness policy, whether it be a Sucker Punch 
which is probably not it on a Grim Snarl, or a Bulldoze on a Calyrex Shadow, which we've seen Calyrex Shadow plus Solgaleo be a thing in the format before, and the way that they deal with, um, you know, any status moves like burns or sleep powders going out into the, in the Solgaleo is, oh, hey, look, there's Tapu Fini, a Pokemon that's already phenomenal in the format uh, because of its access to Misty Terrain, here to set up Misty Terrain for Solgaleo, blocking that all together. So basically, this is like really, really hyper-focused on getting Solgaleo set up from what I can see. You know, if I could talk to Zach, I might know a little bit more, uh, but that's, that's what I see on its face value. Also, if you want to you know, some people might say, okay, well, Solgaleo might struggle versus Zacian plus Groudon because Groudon's able to take on uh, Solgaleo pretty okay if it has the right support. Um, but also Landorus, a really interesting call that, you know, saw more usage in this tournament than it did on the ladder. Landorus, I believe, is at like 13% usage at the moment. Yeah, Landorus Therian's at like 13% usage. Saw more usage in this tournament than you would otherwise expect. Uh, and I think the reason for that is Landorus does very, very well into Zacian plus Groudon. And why is that? Well, you know, Landris can hard wall out Groudon. It gets a minus one on it, and then Groudon can't hit it with a Precipice Blades, with a Max Quake. Uh, Max Rockfall does almost no damage, and Max Flare, even in the sun, doesn't do too much because it got intimidated. Zacian, while it can probably still two-shot a less bulky Landris after an Intimidate, uh, still, you know, it's not able to one-shot it, so you're able to go for that Max Quake into the Zacian and deal major damage. I believe one of the Landris teams that I saw had a White Herb on it. Uh, yeah, it's White Herb, and why White Herb? You might be wondering, why is White Herb good? Well, White Herb reduces or reverses one of the stat drops that you get uh, once per game. So if you lead off Landris into a Zacian, well, hey, not only did you intimidate the Zacian, but if they let off uh, with an Incineroar, so maybe their bulky Zacian could take a hit, uh, well, all of a sudden, no, you didn't intimidate me. I'm still at neutral. So it just makes Landers more reliable to use. And if I could find another Landers team here, I'd like to see if they were also running White Herb. Um, yeah, yeah, we're seeing a lot of like Swords Dance White Herb Landers. And looking at the ladder, you know, we usually see like Life Orb. We usually see like Assault Vest. White Herb is only at 20% usage, but the most... But the most successful teams in the tournament running Landorus did have a White Herb. Why is that? Well, the thing about Pokemon is when you're preparing for a tournament, and this is a thing that you don't do on the ladder um, as much as you do in the tournament, you are stuck using the team for the whole day, and you need to make sure that this tournament is worth your while. You're traveling, you're, you know, maybe you don't care as much about winning, but maybe you want to do well regardless. Um, you need to prepare for your most common matchups, and you need to make a call. Practicing with friends is great. Practicing against um, randoms in the ladder is great. But really looking into what's popular and what you expect people to bring is going to get you the best results. Which you can see with these Landers players saying, hey, I want to beat Zacian, but also I know for a fact I'm going to get intimidated into the ground if I don't bring a White Herb. So I think what I can do is bring, you know, Landers to not only increase the bulk of the rest of my team, but also, you know, I'm prepared for the Intimidate and I can deal with that. So yeah, like that's a thing that you need to do in this format and that's why sometimes in tournaments you see usage stats not really reflect uh what you would expect on the ladder so yeah uh and like i was saying strong steel types are are like key to winning this uh in this format uh you can see here this was a um necrozma dust main team which is a pokemon that i think gets memed on a lot i love necrozma dust main but it hates incineroar it absolutely hates facing incineroar um, despite the fact that it can one-shot it with a max quake at plus two or even plus one, I believe, because of that massive attack stat, uh, you know, it's still capable of getting undersped by an Incineroar and then parting shotted and intimidated. It's not like Solgaleo. It doesn't have full metal body. It has, you know, a thing that just makes weakness policy easier to use with prison armor. You know, it's, it's longevity is great. Um, but you can see some people or, or one of the people, the only person that used uh, Necrozma Dust main to success in this tournament is actually running Swords Dance. Why is that? Well, you know, you have weakness policy and you have sword stance. Seems a little bit weird. Well, I, I think it kind of makes sense. You're going to be facing a lot of incineroar. You're going to be expected to uh, get parting shotted and intimidated. And if you expect the incineroar to come in, well, hey, on that turn, why not go for a sword stance? All of a sudden, they didn't reduce your stats. In fact, you're at a, a net gain that turn and they can still parting shot you. But if your weakness policy went off, hey, at minimum, you're at neutral. And at best, you're still at plus two, so you just get a KO that turn. So I think that's like a really interesting call that people have been making with Necrozma recently. Uh, and I, th I think that's just like super cool. But yeah, uh, something that we notice is there is a lot of Groudon plus Zacian usage in the format. And I think the heavy use of Groudon plus Zacian and with, you know, Groudon comes Gastrodon now because you're prepared for the 
uh, Kyogre matchup. It makes the matchup much easier due to the fact that you have Storm Drain, due to the fact that you can yawn opposing Zacian and yawn opposing Dynamax Pokemon and just absolutely, you know, nay nay on them. Um, what else? What what does, you know, Groudon plus a Zacian mean for the format? Well, it means that you're going to see a lot of Charizards because Charizard is arguably a better Dynamax target than um, Groudon. Why is that? Well, uh, Charizard's max move deals fire type damage uh, for, I believe it is one six damage for four turns. So you're gonna be you're gonna be dealing two thirds of something's uh, health bar it stay, if it stays in for too long, uh, and it also gets solar power. It usually runs like a life orb or a charty berry or something uh, to take hits or deal more damage in the sun. So you know, just max wildfire in the sun is one of the most powerful moves in the game. Hard for anything to switch in on, especially Zacian, who won't be able to one shot a Charizard back due to the resistance. And yeah, it's just like an oppressively powerful Pokemon. Uh, I think that's also a reason why we saw a bit more Landorus in this format, because, you know, Landorus is, if it runs Assault Vest, you know, it's going to be able to eat the hit pretty easily, or if it Dynamaxes, it's usually able to eat the hit, and then you can go for a max Rockfall. So, like, that's a thing that you can do. I think that's another reason why we saw Landorus, because despite Landorus being, like, a Zacian check and, like, a Groudon check, it also can function as, like, a, a de facto Charizard check if you have, like, nothing else. Because as you can see, this team right here, uh, Zach uh, Emerzian, he has like nothing for Charizard. He's got like nothing that truly switches in on it because almost nothing does. Um, but but he's got options. I'm assuming there's like an Eerie Impulse on this Raichu, which will be the Charizard lowering its damage. And I'm assuming that there's a Rock Slide on, or like a Rock Tomb or some kind of Rock move on the uh, Landorus. So yeah. Uh, the only thing about Charizard that's kind of risky is, you know, Electro types are super, super common in this format. We see a lot of Regieleki. Uh, we even see a Dracozolt, <laughs> which is really cool. I want to talk about that in a second. Uh, and we even saw a Pikachu. We'll get into that. I think the Pikachu is one of the most interesting things in the in the in the tournament's results. Uh, but why can you afford to run Charizard right now? Well, for one, Groudon already has a Gastrodon next to it. So you have like two whole immunities to Electro types. So it makes it a little bit safer. If you're going to be running a Charizard, and a Groudon on the same team, you want a Gastrodon because it deals with Kyogre and the Charizard and Gastrodon cover uh, Kyogre or cover Charizard for Electro types in general. So yeah, you can basically see that this Zashi and Groudon core, it hit, you know, third and first in the tournament. Like it's it's a very, very reliable team. It's the exact same team in third and first. Um, but you can also see, you know, Aaron did pretty well with um, like a hyper offensive Kyogre, Whimsicott, Kartana Zashian team. And you even see that Alex Arand, a uh, friend of the channel, shout out to um, shout out to Alex, uh, is running a Zacian Palkia team. You can do well with like things that aren't just weather plus uh, Zacian. You can like use like a Trick Room hybrid team with Palkia. We've seen that do well in tournaments before. You can use Steel types with no Zacian. You don't need Zacian to do well. Um, I I don't think the Calyrex team that did well had Zacian. Yeah, no, Calyrex plus Kyogre is like a super common archetype in the format and while it didn't do well in this tournament you know i wouldn't be surprised if a calyrex team ended up winning a major at some point uh people just want to dogpile on the fact that zashin's like super super used in the format but i don't think that's a reason to really get upset about it it gives you a lot of options for uh how to build your team because it covers things for other restricteds I, I this is like a hot take i have in the format zashin makes it easier to use your favorite pokemon because even if your favorite pokemon fails there's like a good chance that zashian covers for that bad matchup or even vice versa let's say like your favorite pokemon is something that hard checks groudon let's say, let's say that you have a zashian on your team and you go oh hey this really helps out with the fact uh or you know i you know zashian loses to groudon 1v1 in a lot of situations if it gets intimidated and your favorite pokemon just so happens to be i don't know let's let's go with something that's not in the game like like a typhlosion oh hey look at that typhlosion does really well in the sun and it beats other Zacian and it can probably like deal major damage to Groudon if I go for like an eruption like that's just like a a really weird example but it's just one I came up with off the, off the top of my head but I think that just having Zacian in the team enables you to do cool stuff like we see like this hard trick room team with Palkia Zacian that's not you know that that's that's not super super common but it's like a thing that you see once in a while and we even see like Solgaleo plus um Calyrex Shadow with a ton of support you know they just beat Zacian outright. Like it's it's a very good way to challenge Zacian. So yeah, um, 
beyond that, we're going to talk about, I've already, you know, given my two cents on heavy Zacian usage and why I think it's less of a problem with Zacian and more uh, that steel types are super good. And now we're going to move into the fun stuff. Here, here are the fun teams that we saw in the tournament. So Gary here used a Dialga, and once again, powerful steel type, <laughs> Dialga Kyogre, uh, Glacier, Alolan Executor, Indeedee, and Regieleki team. This is a really cool team. Obviously functions well, got top 18, uh, and it has an Alolan Executor and what is essentially just, I don't know, uh, Glacier is a Pokemon that we saw see heavy usage in series seven and nine, if we actually look at series seven. Glacier is at number three in usage. If we look at series nine, Glacier is a little bit further down at 15% in usage. Um, and I think the reason we don't see Glacier right now is because if you're gonna use a Glacier, it means you wanna use Trick Room. And if you wanna use Trick Room Ice types, you, you might as well use Calyrex Ice because it has a better ice move that can't miss. Uh, but the fact that Gary is able to make it work is actually just super cool to me. Um, on paper, I'm trying to figure out what the Glacier does for the team. Uh, you see there is a Dialga here and there is a Kyogre. And while Dialga doesn't like Groudon necessarily, Kyogre takes on Groudon pretty well. And I guess Calyrex, or not Calyrex Ice, I guess Glacier just makes that matchup even better. Uh, Glacier also speed ties with Amoongus, which is something that I didn't think about. If this is like an Iron Ball Glacier, which we don't know, I could see how that could be just a hard counter to Amoongus because, you know, you want to operate in a Trick Room and Amoongus is there to put you to sleep since it, you know, just does so well in Trick Room, uh, able to spore whatever it wants. I could see this being like a de facto answer to just destroying an Amoongus, you know, just, just getting rid of it, you know, so that could be kind of cool. Uh, another pretty interesting team that we saw in the tournament is um, Wolf Glick's team. Where is that? Wolf Glick used Calyrex Ice Palkia, just like a hard Trick Room team. But then he also put a speed swap Feromosa to speed swap the Calyrex or whatever was on the team. So, you know, if you think Calyrex is scary with base 50 speed, uh, now just imagine it with base 151 speed. So yeah, like that that's a really scary thing that I guess he ran. You know, and he got top 32, so that's really cool. Um, and I think... You know, we saw Alex Anderson here with uh, the Rabombi and Senescorch team. I didn't actually get to see what that team did, and I don't know what it does. Uh, but the team that we did see on stream was Max Simon, aka Max D's, aka the dude that I keep running into in videos on ladder with a Pikachu that I have never beaten. If you watch in my old videos, there's a good chance we'll run into Max, and he'll just be using a Pikachu, and we'll just take a big fat L. This dude loves Pikachu. And it was, it was a G-Max Pikachu, I would assume. Um, but he actually, and you can look up this match on YouTube or on Twitch or on the, like the Pokemon's official Twitch channel, uh, because don't support people who re-upload the tournaments and put ads on them because that's not good. But, uh, go on the Pokemon official Twitch channel and watch the, the stream, the Pikachu, the Charizard, the Whimsicott and the Butterfree all show up to game three of matches of, of Max's game. He won game one, lost game two. Now it's game three. You'd imagine Max would lock in at least one of his two restricteds, but no, dude brought no restricteds, one game three. It was insane. Such a cool match. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, obviously there are some matchups where you go, okay, I'm not going to bring my restricteds because I get carried by my support Pokemon, uh, especially in like certain matchups. Uh, but that was just interesting to see because it wasn't a matchup where I would have expected no Zacian or no Kyogre, but it was, it was just crazy. Yeah. Like there's, there's a lot of cool things that happen at, uh, at SLC, um, one more I want to point out before I forget is this team by uh, Vizishista. I can't pronounce the name, sorry. Which uses a Calyrex Ice Kyogre Cinderace, which is a pretty interesting uh, Pokemon in the format. Does pretty well into Zacian, but you know yeah, it, it's a little bit risky because you get intimidated. I want to I want to see a White Herb when I click on this team. I haven't looked at it yet. I'm assuming there's a White Herb. Uh, we see a Whimsicott, an Indeedee, and a Dracozolt. Let's take a look at the team. It's actually a Life Orb. So yeah, uh, this team is pretty interesting. We see Babiri Berry, Calyrex Ice, and that kind of makes sense because um, Babiri Berry allows you to function better outside of Trick Room. It lets you to take uh, a Behemoth Blade from Zacian, where, you know, under Trick Room, you wouldn't need to take it because you just one shot with Max Quake. So here, because I think it's a little bit uh, less Trick Room oriented by the fact that there is no Trick Room, <laughs> uh, it makes it so the Calyrex Ice can eat a hit from Zacian and just KO it. Uh, we see Tailwind Whimsicott with uh, sort of a standard move set, no protect. Uh, we see Choice Specs Kyogre, which is crazy. Uh, we see Psychic Seed and Didi and the Choice Banded Hustle Dracozolt. Honestly, I expected the Life Orb on the Dracozolt so it could function 
you know, Dynamaxed and not have to, because because when you um, because when you Dynamax, you lose your Choice Band bonus. If you didn't know that, uh, if you were to Life Orb it though, you would keep that bonus. So it's kind of interesting to see that. Uh, I, I think this is just like a super cool team. You know, Drake Assault does pretty well into Kyogre. I'm assuming they put a little bit of uh, special defense EVs into that to make sure it could eat like an Ice Beam or a Max Hailstorm and then KO back with um, with uh, Max Lightning. So yeah, no, this is this is a pretty interesting team. But yeah, uh, that's just a brief look at the top 32 teams from SLC. Uh, let me know what you guys think about the format and the results in the comment section down below. Uh, obviously, high Zacian usage, high Incineroar usage, but I think it's less of a Zacian thing and more of a Steel thing. And just Zacian's the best Steel type, obviously, but I think it's more of like a Steel type's a super important thing. But yeah, let me know what you guys think, uh, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.